So welcome to this part again. And again, I was rudely interrupted in the previous part. My apologies, uh, but we'll just continue uh, where we were and left off. So we're doing paper 43, uh, 2018, um, May, June. And I'm Mr. John from explainingmaths.com. And check my site for all my other free resources and like and share this if it is useful uh, because then I can reach your friends too. So it's a show that question. And um, it says, in a shop, the price of a monthly magazine is M dollars, as we just read in the previous part, and the price of a weekly magazine is M minus 75 cents dollars. One day, the shop receives 168 from those monthly magazines and 207 dollars from weekly magazines, okay? The total number of these magazines sold during the day is 100. And then you gotta show that that quadratic equation is true. Now, with a show that question, I cannot use what they want me to show. That should be my answer. It's as if they give you the answer key, okay? However, why do they do show that questions? So you can use it in the next question um, to solve uh, the problem over there, okay? So um, it's quite a demanding question, I have to say, but how can I construct the equation? They say the total number of magazines sold is 100. And how would I find the total magazines sold? Well, let's look at the monthly magazines. This is how much I get, and they cost M dollars. So how many magazines did I sell? Well, you would do 168 divided by M. So many magazines you will have sold. Yeah? And if you make it an easier problem, let's say that you got $100 and each magazine, let's say, is $20, quite expensive, but okay. So if you have $100 and each magazine is $20, how many magazines did you sell? Well, there will be 100 divided by 20, yeah? So the total price divided by the price of one magazine. So five magazines. So that's what you're doing now as well. So the total price of the monthly magazines divided by the price, yeah? Plus the total money you got from those weekly magazines divided by the price, M minus 0.75. Right, so that is the equation that you can construct. And now you gotta play with it a little bit to turn that into what they want it to be, this beautiful quadratic equation. Well, I don't see any fractions there, so let's get rid of the fraction and times everything by M. Because then that first fraction is gone, 207M over M minus 0.75, equals 100 m so make sure to multiply it properly all terms by m and then turn the times all terms by m minus 0 0.75 to get rid of that second fraction so you have i have to write a little bit smaller because otherwise it's not going to fit 7 m equals 100 m times M minus 0.75. Okay, we're getting there slowly. There are no more fractions, but we need to expand and rearrange in order to get what they want us to show. So, 168M, 0.75 times 168. Oh, turn on your calculator first, John. 168 times 0.75 equals minus 126 plus 207m equals 100m squared. There you go, that's your square term, minus 75m. Okay, we continue to rearrange, and because the square term is positive, we will rearrange everything to the right side, because then that one will be positive as well. Okay, so on the left, we have 168m, plus 207m, yeah, that's 375, but if I rearrange that, that will become minus 375, yeah, so I got minus 75, sorry, minus 75m, minus 375m, so that is minus 450m, so I'm doing a few steps in one now, just to save some time, and I've got my constant minus 126 will be a positive 126. Now, I'm almost there, but they talk about 50m squared, which is half of 100. And can you divide everything by 2? Well, minus 450 divided by 2 is 
minus 225m, and 126 divided by 2 is 63. Look at that. That is exactly what they want me to show. So I can say something like shown there, although you don't have to. What a great question. Um, tough question, tough question. So if you don't get full score on that, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, but maybe you can get one or two questions, right? So always try the very best you can. Don't just give up. You know, that's not who we are. We don't just give up. We show resilience. Okay, and we go for it. Find the prize of a monthly magazine. Show all your working. So that is for three points. So the prize of a monthly magazine. Well, I can solve this quadratic now. Uh, so that's why it was a show, that question. I can solve the quadratic. Let me just um, write it down. Uh, 225m plus 63 equals zero. So I'm going to show all my working, but this is a quadratic, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula in a minute. I'm going to write down the answer first. So A is 15, B negative 225, and C is 63. And I'm telling myself the price, of course, is going to be positive, so $4.20, and I think the next one is going to be a negative one. Uh, oh, it's not, 0 0.3. Hmm, okay, could also be the answer. Let me see what I want me to do. Um, well, I, I, I would say it's, 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 it's this one, but okay, let, 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 let's find out what's going to happen. Uh, I got, I'm got. i just going to put 0 0.3 there, which is a different answer I got. I put it there to the side. Anyway, I've got to show all the working. So, what is M? M is minus B plus or minus big square root sign, b squared minus 4ac divided by 2 times a. Yeah, so it's essential that you show these workings, but I always like to start with the answer anyway, and then I'll do my workings. So let's clean this a little bit. So m equals 225 plus or minus, okay, I mean, let's work out that root sign. So, um, Come back to my calculator, 225 squared minus 4 times 50 times 63. So that's 38,025 divided by 100. And then I'm just going to check that, 225 minus the square root of 38,025 divided by 100. So that could be 30 cents. If that was that answer over there. But that can't be right because then I will never get uh, the amount of money that I'm looking for. Um, let me see. So the price of monthly magazine. So the other one, let me just check that to be sure. 225 plus the square root of 38,025 divided by 100, $4.20. There you go. Um, let's move on to the next question, question six. So um, looking at this question, I would say I'm expecting some Pythagoras theorem, maybe a sine or a cosine rule. Let's find out. The pentagon A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, yeah, that's a pentagon. A, C, B equals angle A, E, D, which is 90. Okay, so they're about 90, it's there. Triangle ACD is equilateral. Ah, so this one is 12 and that one is 12. We're just putting it there. This one is 60, 60, and 60. So it's very useful to, to write down all that information that, that um, you know, for an equilateral triangle because that will be useful. There's a reason why it's an equilateral triangle, and I tell you that. With side 12, DE equals BC, 6. So 6, 6. It's there. Calculate BAE. So that is that entire angle. So that entire angle, as you can see now, is 16 plus those two angles. You see that? Let me call this angle alpha and that one beta. Let's look at alpha first. It's part of a right angle triangle. So I can use trigonometry to find alpha. Yeah, so you may want to write down, I don't know what your teacher taught you, but perhaps saw ka toa. And in my angle, or if I'm standing in my angle, then I know the opposite 
and I know the adjacent, so I'm going to use the tangent. So the tangent of alpha equals the opposite over the adjacent. There you go. So what is alpha? So then you have to do to find that angle, shift ton of 6 over 12, eh, which is a half, equals, I'm just going to write down a lots of decimals because I can't round. It's not my final answer yet, is it? So you don't want to round yet. I'm going to do something similar for B. However, B is in this triangle, and for B I know the opposite, and 12 is not the adjacent, but the hypotenuse, right, across the 90 degree angle. That's the hypotenuse. Uh, the sine, guys, the sine of beta is opposite over hypotenuse, so beta equals, so shifts in of a half, and that will equal 30 degrees. Perfect. So what is that total angle? And by the way, indeed, you get four points because it's quite a lot of work. It's 30 plus 26.56505118 plus 60 yeah, of the equilateral triangle equals 116. I'm just going to write the whole thing down. 565 five, and some more drizzle. It's an angle, so we round to one decimal place, 116.6. Beautiful. Calculate AB. Let me find out where are we looking. Ah, here, AB. For two points, right angle triangle. So, Pythagoras theorem. So, A squared plus B squared equals AB squared. Yeah, because AB is the hypotenuse in that triangle. So, 36 as 6 squared plus 144. And then we do the square root of that answer. So that will be 13.4164. So three significant figures, 13.4. Oh, can you see that? 13.4. Oh, you can't see that. Look at that. All my workings were, you see, I'm, I'm so in my paper that I don't look at the screen what you are able to see and you have no idea. But anyway, I'm sure you were able to follow what I was doing. Um, and if you're not, explaining maths.com, right? So have a look. I have everything you need about Pythagoras theorem there. Calculate AE. Um, really, for three points. What a lovely, what a lovely exam. Because AE is part of um, also a right angle triangle. It's not the hypotenuse, but AE squared plus. AE squared plus 6 squared equals the hypotenuse squared, which is 12. Now I just go down. So again, AE and then 6 squared equals 12 squared. Yeah? Equal at your triangle. All those sides are the same. And that's why it's useful to start, when you start a question, to put those values there. Because otherwise you may forget. So AE is going to be the square root of 12 squared minus 6 squared. So 144 minus 36. Uh, square root answer, which is 10.3923, so 10.4. Look at that, for three points, that's five points for doing some Pythagoras theorem, and that is generous. So make sure you do it properly. Um, calculate the area of the pentagon, yeah, so it still relates to the pentagon of the previous question, the area, ooh, for four points. We've got some time to do it. Area of the pentagon. So that will be the area of this triangle. I'll work it out here, okay? So we have the diagram next to it. Plus, let's do the area of that triangle, plus the area of the equilateral triangle. So let's call that one one, two, and triangle three so triangle one it's a right angle triangle so base times height divided by two gives you the area but the base and the height must make that perpendicular angle right so we're talking about base six times height and that's ae so whatever your answer was to the previous question in this case 10.4 so six times 10.4 divided by two, eh? or times half, gives you the area of that triangle. Plus, let's look now at the area of that other right angle triangle, base times height, 
where the base and the height make that 90 degree angle. So 6 times 12 divided by 2 eh, for the triangle times a half divided by 2. Plus, and now that equilateral triangle, now that of course is not a right angle triangle. So for non right angle triangles, we say half AB sine C. So for this one, it's going to be half times A times B times the sine of 60 degrees. Half AB sine C. Um, if you're not really comfortable using that formula, check my website. As you know, I say it all the time. And that's because it's an amazing website, of course. Plus uh, 72 divided by 2. So uh, that's 36 equals plus half times 144 times the sine of 16 equals, and I get 129.5538. It's a more drizzle. So I always write down those decimals first, then you round to three significant figures, which will give you 130. Okay, but if you make a silly mistake with rounding, but you wrote down those um, those decimals, you probably still get a full score. Now, of course, my workings uh, should go over here. Okay, you do it like that. Question B, three D.